Welcome to another session from SQL Maestros. This is yet another webinar and we are doing pretty well keeping up with our promise of doing one webinar each week. So every Thursday we are coming up with a unique topic, a unique session, some new content and that way we are building up our webinar library. So all of you should go to sqlmaestros.com and jump over to our recorded webinars section and you will be able to access almost all of them for free but a few of them are very nominally priced so you could um, kind of subscribe to them and get lifetime subscription. Today's session, today's content is about Concurrency Part 2 and the official title is A Practical Introduction to SQL Server Concurrency Part 2. I know what you're wondering, where is part one? Well, part one was delivered as another webinar a few weeks back. And again, you can go to the recorded webinars section on sqlmaestros.com and get access to it. It is free for you. Okay, so what are we doing in part two today? In part two, I precisely have three demos for you. <clears throat> Let's look into them. The first one is optimistic concurrency model. I had promised in part one that I am going to demonstrate this. Part one focused on the pessimistic uh, portion of the concurrency uh, architecture. This one is going to talk about optimistic concurrency. Then we are going to have a very simple demonstration about troubleshooting blocking scenarios. And then we will look into troubleshooting deadlocks. Now, troubleshooting deadlocks and deadlocks as a concept uh, requires its own session. Uh, of course, that uh, this, this concept, this topic is worthy of that. But I thought this is part two. So let's just touch upon deadlocks. I'm not only going to show you how a deadlock happens, but I'm also going to show you how to fix it. But again, uh, this is really all level 100, level 200 stuff. Okay, so let's get started. First one, optimistic concurrency model. Let's open up this file and here we go. As always, we are going to use AdventureWorks 2016 for the demo and uh, let's check the data. This is the data we are going to play with, which is person dot person. And this is what the data looks like. You may already be familiar with all of this first name, last name, etc. Now, what are we going to do in connection one? we are going to update this table person dot person and set the last name to Bunsil where business entity ID is equal to one. Now, when you fire a, a transaction, when you start a transaction, you know the default isolation level is read committed. You don't need to explicitly say that because that's the default isolation level inside SQL Server. So let's copy this and create a new window. Let me close the object explorer do a new query here and let's call this as connection one. Well, I didn't copy. Okay, let's copy this and put it here. That's connection one. <clears throat> okay, let me see what we are doing in connection two. Okay, in connection two, we are going to perform a read operation. Okay, why not treat this as connection two at the same window? Okay, we will do that. No, we will not do that. Let's just make things very simple. So I'm going to open a new query and call this as connection to. So now if we go and execute, you are getting the data as expected. There's no blocking, there's no locking, nothing, and everything is going good. Um, and you are getting good concurrency. You're getting the data out. Now let's go back here and let's update this. Okay, watch this. The last name for business entity ID here is Sanchez, as you can see. This is what the data looks like right now. We're going to change this to Bunsil, okay? Let's go and fire the begin tran here. Let's go and execute this. Now one row affected, obviously business entity ID one. Now take a note, this is an in-flight transaction, so there is no commit, no rollback. Let's jump over to here and let's go and execute this. Now you know what is going on, right? This is default isolation level read committed and the default isolation level read committed is a pessimistic concurrency isolation level, which means if you go and execute this now, this is going to wait. And this is the default behavior of writers blocking the readers. This was covered in part one of the demo of, of this webinar. 
Okay, let's go and stop this. Now, what you want to do here is, let's roll back connection one. Let's do this for the moment. So I am going to call a rollback. Let's go and execute this. Done, jump over here. Now, what we are going to do is implement read committed snapshot, which is the optimistic concurrency model. So starting with SQL Server 2005, yes, starting with SQL Server 2005. I know you're watching this in a year when we have SQL Server 2022 right now. So way back, Microsoft has introduced, had introduced rather, the optimistic concurrency model. So the pessimistic concurrency model has these isolation levels, which is read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, and serializable. All of them fall under the pessimistic concurrency model. And the basic funda, the basic concept behind pessimistic concurrency model is writers block readers. And what is meant by optimistic concurrency model? Writers will not block readers. I mean, it's, it's, it is this optimistic behavior that, you know, when I am writing onto the data, I might have readers coming in wanting to read the same data. So at least allow them to read the last committed value. Why stop them from reading the last committed value? So if, if the value is being changed from 20 to 10, right? It's being changed from 20 to 10. 20 is the last committed value. 10 is still not committed. It's still an in-flight transaction. So if you're allowing someone to read 10, they're reading dirty data. Remember in pessimistic concurrency model, you can actually go and read 10 as well. You may use no lock hint or you may run under read uncommitted. Both means the same thing that you are allowing dirty data to be read. But here the concept of optimistic concurrency model is when you read 20, you're not reading dirty data, you are reading the committed data and writers should not block readers. So this is what we are going to do is set the isolation transaction isolation level read committed uh, snapshot. So first things first, in order for you to change the behavior of the database from pessimistic to optimistic, you have to turn this option on, which is read committed snapshot. In order for you to turn this option on, we have to make sure that there are no connections to AdventureWorks 2016. So what we are going to do in, in all these users, I will we'll just go and change the database context, the connection to master, come back here and let's change this also to master and set read committed snapshot on. Sometimes this doesn't work and you know got to close the windows, but let's see. Let's go and execute this and yeah, it worked. So what we have done is we have turned this option on. When you have turned this option on, the behavior of read committed isolation level, which is the default isolation level, has now changed uh, from pessimistic to optimistic, which is writers are not going to block readers and readers will be allowed to read the last committed value. Okay, let's first see that in action and then we'll talk more about it. Connection one again, let's go to connection one again. We already have the connection one here and let's go and, okay, we got to change the database to AdventureWorks 2016, fire the transaction again, which is the update statement and as expected, one row affected. Remember, this is an in-flight transaction. Let's jump over to um, connection two, which is going to perform the read operation. We have to change the database context back to Adventure 2016, and we're going to execute this. This is the climax, right? So this was earlier waiting. Is this going to run now? And if it is running, what value will it produce? Let's go and see this. Let's go and execute this. Yes, it runs optimistic concurrency model and we are reading the last committed value. I again want to remind you that this is not reading dirty data. This is not no lock hint or this is not running in read uncommitted. I haven't even specified any specific isolation level for this session. It's all default right now and you are reading the last committed data. You're not reading Bunsel, which is the dirty data right now. My last name is not dirty data anyway. Um, now, uh, this is optimistic concurrency in action, right? Uh, but this one now, um, so first things first, advantages here. Optimistic concurrency is good 
because it uh, it reduces uh, blockings uh, and it improves concurrency. When you are allowing readers to read the last committed data, writers are not blocking readers, you are improving efficiency, you are improving concurrency. In many, many scenarios, too many blocking scenarios, lengthy weights are kind of perceived as performance problem. You know, remember the previous example there when this was waiting? The user really does not know why am I waiting for and can be perceived as a performance problem. You and I, we know, okay, this is a blocking scenario and you know, the select statement is just waiting to get access to the data or just to acquire a shared lock. But the business user would simply fire a support case or a support ticket that, okay, my stored procedure or my report is taking minutes to run. So it improves concurrency, it improves performance, so to say, uh, in many ways. So this is really good thing uh, to go for. Uh, now, also the decision about uh, optimistic and pessimistic is something that the business has to decide. Would you allow something like this? Will the business allow something like this? Or do you really want uh, the data to be blocked until you know, the requests to be blocked until all other in-flight transactions are complete. I always say that concurrency uh, decisions are not taken by developers or TBAs. This is really decided by the business as to what concurrency uh, should we implement. But I'm kind of saying in general, optimistic concurrency is good and should be preferred over optimistic concurrency models. What I have shown you right now is a very straightforward implementation of optimistic concurrency model. There is a little complicated and a slightly bigger version of this, which is the fifth isolation level called snapshot isolation. So we know read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, serializable. These are all pessimistic isolation levels. You have a new one, fifth one. I should not say new one in this year, but then uh, as part of this optimistic concurrency model introduction in, 20, uh, in 2005, now uh, we had this snapshot isolation, which is an isolation level. What we did just now was not really dealing or playing around with isolation level. We only changed the database option, which changed the default behavior of read committed isolation level from pessimistic to optimistic. But snapshot isolation level is slightly more tricky implementation and is truly, truly an isolation level. Okay. so. All good, you know, as, as and when we want, we can just go and read the last committed data and the reports will be all good and it will make business sense also because you're not reading dirty data. So let's select this and roll back. Okay, we are done with this and we can continue reading the data as well. And of course, if we commit, we will read the committed data. So if, if I had committed this transaction, last name would have been Bunsel. And then if you fire select statement again, you would get Bunsel. Okay, so let's see. This is optimistic concurrency model in action. Remember, we have done this with, uh, um, with this database option, read committed snapshot on. That's all is required. But one thing to be noted, this is a database option. You've changed the default behavior globally for this database. Now all transactions and everything is just going to run in optimistic model. Keep it, keep that in mind. It's just not for this query or for this session or for this workload. This is a database wide change that we have done. Okay. That's the first demo where I demonstrated optimistic concurrency model. Hope you have got the idea here. Questions, questions can go in the Q&A window. Yes, not in the chat window. Questions can go in the Q&A window and I will answer them. Okay, so meanwhile, let's close this now and move on to the next demo.